like um, speaker before me, absolutely fantastic to be here today and to talk about flourishing, which is something that I am completely passionate about helping young people to do, um, both through um, Untap It, which is the project I'm running at the moment, but also the um, charity and campaign I ran before, which was around dyslexia. Um, We've had so much positivity, I feel like I'm throwing some negativity at you, but actually I'm just telling the story and hopefully Untap It will be a solution to actually what we're facing here. Um, human potential is, without a shadow of doubt, the most raced, wasted resource um, on Earth. Just, just to give you, put some context behind it. Um, what would you think if I told you that two in three um, employees say that they're disengaged from their jobs? It's a massive statistic and it's sort of a big throwaway statistic in a way, isn't it? Because it's a bit too big to, to grapple with, but that's a Gallup statistic. Um, but if you actually put a value or a cost associated to that, which Gallup have done, that's £60 billion to the UK economy every year. Um, and that's $300 billion, which is a huge amount of money. But actually, if you put it into context, and hopefully this will take you that way, um, just imagine if only a third of our services were running effectively. So if we only had a third of our electricity or a third of our schools or a third of our, our trains, I mean, it just, you wouldn't let it happen, would you? So why, why is this happening? Well, if you actually look at research that um, we've done at Untap It, um, we found that two in three people said that their jobs don't make use of their real talents. And two-thirds of people say that whilst working, they've never had access to any profiling to look at what their talents are or access to any tools to help them to develop. So you can see with that, you've got something that actually is very frustrating but also very unfair if it's just the management level and above that are actually getting access to all these things. But actually, it starts um, way further or, or um, earlier than that in education. Um, big bugbear of mine. Um, Two-thirds of people said that education didn't find what they were good at. So you've got this sort of recurring thing of, of two-thirds coming, coming across. And if you look at campaigners like Ken Robinson, who've done fantastic TED Talks that I'm sure you've all seen, um, they actually say that um, we're stuck in, our education system is stuck in the industrial age when actually we've moved into the information age. But if you look at all the thought leaders at the moment, like OECD and all the research, they're now telling us that we've moved from the information age and we're now into the age of talents. But if you've got a situation where work isn't identifying your talents or using your talents and education isn't, you kind of got a bit of a problem. So this is the gap that hopefully we want um, Untap It to, to fill. The other thing that I think is really important to bear in mind is that we actually start out with incredibly um, creative and fantastic kids. Um, there's some research that you may well be aware of. Uh, it was around creative thinking and divergent thinking. And children starting um, primary school age five, are 98% of them are genius level divergent thinkers or creative thinkers. And you can see that. Well, if you give a young child a, a cardboard box, they'll find a million things to do with it, won't they? But by the time you get to 10, that statistic is down to 32%. Uh, which is just unbelievable in such a short space of time. And at the end of school, only 2% of children are still um, creative geniuses, divergent and thinking geniuses. Yet, as, as you've touched on, 96% of people, uh, of CEOs, say that creative thinking is the number one trait they look for in their potential leaders. So we believe that the IQ test is outdated. Um, we um, genuinely, uh, and it's not just us, there are a lot of people saying that actually all, all the IQ test uh, generates is um, a view of whether or not you're likely to pass exams. Um, we actually believe that the education system needs a complete overhaul, but we're realistic enough to know that that's probably very unlikely to happen. So with Untap It, we want to help give it a nudge and actually do some things about that. So um, we believe that in this age of talent, you need to have 21st century skills. So we're looking at creativity, people intelligence, all the things that you actually don't learn at school. Um, but also, we need to develop the right attitude and the right mindset for success. Um, two in two thirds of employers, that statistic again, um, actually said that they rate attitude um, as a better indicator of whether somebody's going to be successful than skills, and they actually employ on that basis. But where are our attitude classes in our skills, in our schools? Do we ever teach that? Do we actually t teach people how to think in a way that's going to make them successful or innovative or, or whatever? So hopefully um, that's where Untap It comes in. But just let me share with you. Um, 
This is Ted, my son, who I'd like you to meet now on the basis that I'm going to talk to you about my journey into dyslexia. Um, Ted will hate me for showing this to you because he's now 20 years old, so he's <laughs> not going to be very keen about that. But you can see here, he's a young man, head full of dreams, dressed in a superhero outfit. You know, the world was his oyster. Um, until he started school and realised that he was dyslexic and he kind of ground to a bit of a halt. Um, as you probably know, if you know anything about dyslexia, um, we normally, I'm dyslexic, my whole family, we normally have lots of talents, but they're just not the ones that you see in school. So we very much focused on what Ted was good at and helped him to develop the right attitude and mindset to be successful. And he's gone on actually to um, pursue a career in music. He went to music college and he's just signed a record deal. So hopefully he's going to be very successful, but at least he's following his passion. So I'm giving that a good go. Um, but actually it was Ted's experiences uh, in school that f um, focused my attention and made me start on um, Extraordinary People, which was way back in 2005. And at that point, none of the dyslexia charities were actually communicating because they were all fishing in the same pond for, for funds and um, just weren't really getting their act together. And none of them were talking to government, which I found absolutely extraordinary. So I um, created a campaign. First of all, I formed the Extraordinary People Party. Um, which had one member, which was me, and um, stood against Ruth Kelly in the general election. And thankfully, after all the banging on doors that everybody had done, the government then started to listen to what we were talking about. Um, the BBC did a documentary about my work at a sink school, um, which got, a, again, a lot of focus from government. Um, eventually, the government did an official review into dyslexia and invested 10 million to training teachers, which was fantastic. And now, to this day, they still fund um, the Dyslexia Trust, which is um, all of the charities working together and, and helping to advise government. And it's, the job isn't done, but it's kind of a lot better than it was. But actually, the thing I'm most proud of with Extraordinary People um, is the fact that uh, when I was campaigning back in 2005, very few people have even made the link of dyslexia and talents. We've now got a situation where Silicon Valley actually actively employ and seek out dyslexic people because they recognise the way that they think is a really brilliant way of thinking. Um, and it, even to the extent of um, Dan Goldman in his book David and Goliath talks about dyslexia and the talents and the abilities. So we, it's, it's not sorted, but we're a lot better than we were. But it was actually Untap It that led me um, on, uh, sorry, Extraordinary People that led me on to starting um, Untap It because whilst I was doing Extraordinary People, um, I was actually interviewing some of the world's most famous dyslexics and to try and sort of understand how they become successful to help inspire other people. Um, and what was, what was coming through very clearly was that there was a sort of a recipe for success. There, uh, there was a way of thinking that they all adapted or adopted whatever they were doing in life. Um, and a lot of it was about focusing on your strengths, but then there were definitely there was this trait of, of mindsets coming through. Um, and I then got in touch with scientists and psychologists and, and tried to put some sort of meat behind that to, to see what the science was with it all. And definitely there is a recipe for success. There are ingredients that enable people to become successful from whatever walk of, of life you, you are coming from. Um, so the idea of Untap It is that we actually want to boil that down into a digital, um, onto a website and a digital resource and then share that with the world. Um, and as um, Jamie, who is one of our amazing ambassadors, has said, um, Untap It is democratising good advice. So just to give you an idea, it's a global social enterprise. Um, it, it's about helping everybody to explore their potential. We're primarily focusing on younger people, but it's actually uh, there for everybody. The tools will work for everybody. Um, we've got two things. The first thing, we have um, inspirational films. We've interviewed some extraordinary people, from an astronaut to a paleontologist uh, to Martin Sorrell to all sorts. Um, and you can see when you watch the interviews, this, this whole sort of recipe and, and um, theory is coming through. Then we've got um, a whole team of coaches that actually will enable people to actually follow and, and learn how to, to think in this way. Um, the most exciting thing for me, actually, which is a big, big thing that we're doing, is um, we're developing the PQ, or the Potential Quotient. So we want eventually it to be an alternative to the IQ test. Um, we're looking at 21st century talents and skills and, and measuring and helping people to grow those. Um, again, the success mindsets that I've, I've talked about, we've, we're launching with that first. So it's how you can measure yourself against these, these five traits and how you can get better at it. 
Um, and we're also going to be looking at values and, and what drives you and what motivates you because it's very important if you're going to reach your potential and flourish to actually be really true to who you are. Um, it's free for the world. Uh, we're also developing some business tools because, as I mentioned earlier on, most people in the, sort of tr the staffing pyramid don't get access to any of these things, and we think that needs to change, so it should. So we've got some very disruptive business tools that hopefully will be used by everybody. Um, and in essence, we uh, are in beta. You can have a, a look at the website, check it out, see what you think about it. Um, we've, we're launching later this year, um, or possibly sort of October, November time. We're just working on that at the moment. But we're very keen to hear from you, hear what anybody thinks about the site as it stands, how we can improve it, and, and really just connect with as many people as we can. Um, and I'll just close now with... Um, a quote from Oprah. I was lucky enough to actually go to uh, LA to meet Oprah and this is what she said to me which I thought was pretty awesome from coming from somebody like her. Um, but actually we do believe that untap it and, and actually reframing the way we see intelligence is something that is absolutely essential because only then can the world actually flourish. Thank you. Thank you.